Hey everybody, Ultra Director Jester here. Merry Christmas, and welcome back to Sonic Frontiers. See, I even got Sonic all dressed up in the Santa outfit to match the holiday spirit. <laughs> so, what's this about? Why am I going back to this Ultra Hard DLC again? Didn't I hate it to death? Didn't I uninstall it in a fit of rage and anguish? Well, since our last outing regarding the Final Horizons DLC, Sega and Sonic Team have uh, since released a patch, Update 1.41. That basically fixes virtually every single goddamn problem that I touched on. Go figure. Well, I guess this is just one of those pitfalls of modern gaming. Sometimes a game gets magically fixed all of a sudden after you've already said your piece. Not a big deal. I, for one, appreciate the effort and the speed with which this patch was released. So for this epilogue to Sonic Frontiers, I want to give credit where credit is due and not end on such a sour note regarding an admittedly still pretty excellent Sonic game. As you can see, I'm just going to be dashing through the DLC a second time here real fast, and uh, I'll try to showcase a few things that's changed. I'm just getting the basics, not really bothering with too many of the extra challenges or stages, so I may miss out on some specific things, which is fine, because the TLDR version of this episode is basically to fix the DLC, now it's actually completable, it's actually worth playing, and now Sonic Frontier's reputation is saved. So, let's get started. Well, we can begin with our friends here. The ability progression has been overhauled. It says they adjusted the stats of some special moves for Amy, Knuckles, and Tails after leveling them up. Oh boy, did they. One of the major issues I had was the fact that when you start playing as one of Sonic's friends, you are given absolutely no abilities whatsoever. You start from the squarest of square one. I mean, it makes sense from a narrative and a gameplay perspective to start from scratch and work your way up, but they didn't even give you crucial abilities that you need to use in order to interact with the world around you. Like the psych loop to dig up treasure chests and being able to attack things. Not like you can do much damage anyway. And getting XP was not exactly easy either, since you needed to either seek out these Traveler Cocos or do some ridiculous acrobatics challenge to get a drop of water in the reservoir. Some of which require having those starting abilities to even attempt. Now the threshold to unlock these crucial abilities is reduced, and it feels like these loose Traveler Cocos that give you a whole bunch of XP are way more abundant, at least on easy mode. Yeah, I've been playing on easy mode again just to see what the bare minimum requires now, so I didn't check what changes were made to other difficulties, but now not only can I obtain these starting abilities much more quickly, I've now had an opportunity to unlock these new abilities that we never got a chance to show off. I didn't get these really cool ones, but hey, look, we got a multi-lock! We can parry now! Heck, I even figured out what these mysterious purple signs are for! Yeah, those weird purple-colored treasure chests that we couldn't do anything with? Well, here's the trick. See, each of the three friends have a particular ability that they can use to, I don't know, activate these things and reveal a, like a spring or whatever. Amy has her hammer, Knuckles does a big ground pound, and Tails has some kind of ray gun. Oh, wait, we actually unlocked that one before! Well, the thing is, it's a little finicky and it doesn't work all the time. So I guess you need, like, a lot of rings to activate it, which is why most of these have a whole bunch of ten ring groups surrounding them. I mean, it's not the most intuitive method, meaning a hundred rings or so to pull off one move, but... Hey, whatever. That's another way I can interact with the overworld now, and it's not feeling so restricted all the time. I'm loving it so far. It's like the entire island has opened up in a way it hadn't before. And is it just me, or did they tighten up the controls a little bit? I'm not sure if it was just wishful thinking on my part, or me just having a better time of things and not being as frustrated, but I don't know, it just feels like the game handles better. At least when it comes to fine exact movements, it doesn't feel as floaty. Like this part here, where I have to cycloop using these boost pads, I couldn't do it to save my life before, but now it's doable somehow? Am I crazy? I don't know, maybe I'm just having more fun now that it's not much of a nightmare to go through. Either way, this loosening of difficulty in the overworld ripples throughout the rest of the game and makes the DLC a lot more viable. It is absolutely a welcome improvement. Speaking of which, the most improved award has to go... to Knuckles. Knuckles' maneuverability during gliding has significantly increased. No fucking kidding! Not only does he maneuver better in the air, that awful beginning wind-up animation has been entirely removed, so he flies almost exactly one-to-one -one how he did in Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. Finally! That's what we've been waiting for! What turned out to be one of the more aggravating moments of the DLC, and a section that just felt like pulling out your own teeth with your own hair, actually made it into a highlight. And it's actually fun to just fly around and see how bad the pop-in will be this time. Ooh. Ooh. 
With the abilities easier to unlock now, complete with Knuckles regaining his three-hit punch combo he's had since the 90s, it feels like by altering the pace and rate at which the player levels up, they finally did what they wanted to achieve with this section, and now it feels familiar and playable. Heck, they pulled it off so well, it almost feels like they could make an entire spin-off game starring Knuckles with how good this feels. I mean, look! Gliding over huge swaths of land, searching for your target, and honing in and dive-bombing like an eagle once you arrive. Imagine if a whole game was like this, and you were hunting in emerald shards or whatever. That'd be awesome, right? Couldn't be any worse than giving Shadow a gun, or Sonic a car, or Silver the time of day. I don't know, maybe I'm just getting a little overly excited, but they really turned things around for Knuckles, and I'm pleased as punch. And I can only hope that going forward they expand on this premise, but that won't hold my breath. Now, Sonic Frontiers is still Sonic Frontiers, and there's still some jank, has to be expected. I mean, getting stun locked down a cliff is just par for the course if you've been playing Sonic games for as long as I have. And the pop-in is still in full effect. But this low-res tree certainly took me by surprise. Yeesh. Well, that's nothing. But there are some things that Sonic Team remained firm on, and even doubled down on some things. For instance, Tails strangely still has no lock-on function, which is still baffling and clunky. I mean, you'd see a thing for him to lock onto, and he just can't do it. It's so weird. The top-tier abilities for the friends are still uh, understandably pretty expensive, with a bit of requisite grinding being necessary. You know, that makes sense, too. But the most doubling down comes in the fact that the cyber stages have not changed their stances one bit, and they are still as nightmarish as before. They really want you to do each of these stages and all of their crazy stipulations. But they did one very important thing differently. If you happen to die before hitting a checkpoint, which is going to happen many, many times, the timer would not reset, so you would have to manually restart the stage on your own or risk getting a crap rank. Now when you restart, the timer resets as well, eliminating the need for a manual restart. Now you can just jump back into the game. This deceptively simple quality of life update does absolute wonders with the flow of gameplay. Instead of having to do a button prompt sequence to restart the entire level every single fucking time you die, you can just automatically get back in the action without having your frustration compound upon itself. Adding the other improvements on top of that, like the smoother gameplay in the overworld accommodating me better, and the actual fun that I'm having with my other friends, I can actually dedicate a bit more time and patience to these cyber stages since I'm not getting as discouraged as before. It's just a really difficult stage that I can realistically chip away at and take my time on, rather than just another round of torture on top of all the other tortures. And while it's still a brutal challenge in its own right, that's far more manageable of an ask. So you can either put your skills to the test, or you can do what I did and not fucking bother with them. No big deal. Stage is too hard. Ignore them. I blazed through the DLC in about uh, three hours or so, skipping all the dialogue, ignoring most of the challenges, stages, even the optional side stories with other characters. I got on by finding lookout Coco's buried in chests as I went along, and save for needing to get an extra one or two, I've never had a serious roadblock. There's no real reason to even enter these stages, let alone fully complete them. Well, there kind of is, but we'll get to that. Okay, now that Sonic's friends and the basics are covered, let's go to Sonic's portion. The towers are still here, but they feel vastly different than before. You see, it used to be they had these pink balloons for easy mode to make the towers easier to scale, but now they've revamped them somehow and made them even easier. Now we have these orange balloons to help out. They've added these clusters of ring boosts all around to prevent you from falling, and they even put in multiple pathways, so you can either take these orange balloons and go on the automated easy path, or you can forego those balloons and springs and jump into the actual challenge anytime you want, where there will be most likely another row of balloons to carry you through as well. So if you do happen to fall, you can either hopefully lock onto one of the many balloons and get back in the fray, or eat your humble pie and start all over again. Which is also now easier to do, because those concerns for those pink panels that you lock onto and then go away and make it nearly impossible to scale the tower again, they actually respawn after a certain amount of time now. Retrying is easier, scaling is more fun, it's got this roller coaster speed and intensity, it's dynamic and winding. Oh gosh, call me crazy. It's starting to feel more like an actual fucking Sonic game up in here, not an only up slash getting over ripoff. This does kind of trivialize the challenge of these trial towers quite a bit, but who fucking cares? It's way more fun this way. Again, I can't speak on how the higher difficulties change these towers, maybe by having less balloons in normal mode and none on hard, but throwing the player a bone was absolutely the right move. Now, for another big change. The trial is at the top of the towers. The trials themselves are unchanged, but 
the limitations they impose and their level of difficulty have been drastically reduced, thank god. There are minor changes to these trials, like the window for perfect parrying widening to a considerable degree, the time limits being adjusted, I think, but the change that implemented the most positive reaction out of me is the fact that they gave Sonic 25 levels of attack power, instead of keeping him at level 1. Holy mother of Mobius and hedgehogs above, was this the best thing they could have ever done to fix these stupid trials? This now turns an arduous chore of a test into an appropriately scaled challenge. This makes the trials way more forgiving, again, in line with what you'd expect from a Sonic game, and again again, strengthening the flow of gameplay. This leads up to the dreaded Master King trial, which is where I stopped playing and deleted the game last time. What they wanted from me was to defeat three titans in a row, in one go, with only 400 rings, with no way to get more. This demand for perfection, pure fucking perfection, was way too much of a roadblock, and I hit my limit. Too much adversity for me, too little reward. They've since changed this trial, and it's this change in particular that really inspired this episode. Sonic's attack is increased to 25, as we know, but the defense of the Titans are lowered, and halla fucking luya, they gave Sonic 600 rings to play with instead of 400. Now, instead of uh, having about 133 rings per Titan, Sonic now has 200 rings per Titan. That's like over a full minute they added to each boss fight. This is a huge difference, and it makes the trial actually achievable, you know, by people other than those who can beat Sekiro with their eyes closed and only using their elbows. Still can't get any rings, and the on-rail segment of the Wyvern is still a mess that can screw you hard, but hey, can't have it too easy, right? The added combination of Sonic's increased attack, the lowered defense of the Titans, the widened parry window, and the increased ring count is exactly what I needed to beat the Master King trial on my first try. No joke. Got a little tight at the end, thanks to some lovely combat jank, but I finished it with just under 200 rings. Meaning that, even without the added ring bonus, just having Sonic buffed and the Titans nerfed would have been enough to beat this trial on my own. But, as it stands right now, this is absolutely an appropriate level of challenge I would expect from a Sonic game. Progress has been made, the way to the final battle is unlocked, finally. The DLC can actually be beaten now. And it's all thanks to the effort put forth by Sonic Team in such a short time. Thanks guys for listening to the criticisms and suggestions, balancing the game as needed. Now when they say they made the DLC to thank the fans for their support, I actually believe it. So, no hard feelings, right? Right, okay! Now that we've established that the DLC can actually be beaten by ordinary humans, let's cover the new secret final boss without relying on someone else's long play. By talking to the Master King Coco again, he'll take you to the battleground, but he also has knowledge on how to actually defeat him. You can wail on him all you want, but you won't be able to actually deal any damage to him until you do a special trick to defeat him once and for all. Yes, there's actually a hidden trick that you need to do in order to definitively finish off the actual fight, and this little prick is actively withholding knowledge from you. There's three obscure button prompts you need to do during the fight at specific times, and he'll only tell you everything if you do everything. He says that only a true warrior who's done everything on the island can actually be worthy of obtaining this secret. And so, by completing the map 100%, getting S ranks, and clearing every challenge in the cyberspace stages, everything the island has to offer, will the king disclose this crucial secret to you. A noble effort, but that's a rather stupid move for the king to pull, and quite naive the devs who assume he wouldn't just, I don't know, look up the answer online? GameFAQs forums have been around for over 25 years, you don't know this by now? Steam discussion forums, wiki guides, IGN walkthroughs, a thread on the Sonic Frontiers subreddit is how I found out that there was even a trick in the first place. What a foolish notion. Well, fortunately, you don't have to do all the things on the island to actually do the trick, you just have to know about it. Unlocking this knowledge just reveals the appropriate button prompts at the right time, but it's not that hard to pull off. So, let's make sure we get up to max rings, and let's begin. First off, you fight Supreme like normal. It goes the same way as it did in the main game, going in with max stats and a thousand rings in the breath of fresh air after what we've been through. I feel like a deity. But then the end shows up, and attaches a lovely purple umbilical cord into its head. Now Supreme is fused together with the end, and it's supercharged with power. Also, it won't take any damage no matter what you do. It'll also start hurling energy spheres and slashing at you, so you have to achieve perfect parries on them to even have a window of opportunity to attack at all. When you play on easy mode, these parries are trivial, nigh impossible to miss, it feels like. 
It shows off its gun to show you how cool it is, and now you can begin your assault proper. So he'll throw his spears once again, and he'll slash at you once again, and at the end of that flurry of blows, you'll be vulnerable for your attacks, even though he's still not taking any damage. This is where we need to start enacting the trick. So, step one, you need to hit the right bumper, or rather just do a side step. This will make you target the umbilical cord, and when you attack it, it'll be dislodged from its head. Beat him up and perfect parry all this shit again, when his cycle restarts until his health goes all the way down again. The next phase won't begin until you take care of the second step of the trick, which is to go towards this opening here and hold a triangle, or namely, do a cycle loop around it. This will dislodge this big old gun of his, and then you can move right on over to step three, which is to cycle loop the rifle itself. Forgive me, this camera angle is murder on one's depth perception. If you fail, the umbilical cord comes back and you gotta start all over again. But if you succeed, he plays his trump card. He does some kind of super move on you that takes away all but 100 of your rings for the rest of the fight. This is the game telling you, hey, you figured out the secret! Now beat him really quickly or you're gonna die and you gotta do it all over again! So all of Sonic Frames put up a shield to protect the gun during the phase, and I guess if you take too long, he'll start attacking your friends and weaken their shield. I imagine it's game over after that, but you just uh, hit him a bunch of times, and I think he just, I mean, well, at least he's supposed to go down. I, I mean, it's, it's janky. It's Sonic Frontiers. What do you expect? But anyway, you deliver the final blow, and then that's the end. I'm gonna let the ending cutscene take over now. I'm done. See ya. You did well, Sage. It's time to head home, dear daughter. Home. I like the sound of that, father.
Sage got her happy ending. Hooray! Thanks so much for watching Sonic Frontiers. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you for the next one. Now I'm not alone, a family of my own. I get to go home with you. Feelings deep inside come flowing from my eyes. I get to go home.